All right. Recording is going. And can everybody see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Yep. For the PowerPoint. OK. So tonight, thanks everyone for um, coming to the training. Um, tonight we're going to talk about uh, dynamic CRM uh, administration. And I think uh, the meeting and the training tonight is going to focus on not so much on specific items, although we will touch on a few of them, but more of um, the concept of what's happening with CRM and the evolution to the power platform. Um, CRM has, has quickly evolved even just in the last six months. And so when you talk about administration, you can't um, talk about really doing anything in CRM without really understanding what's the transitions from the what we call the classic interface to the power platform. And CRM is really leading the way uh, in that um, process uh, of all the Microsoft Dynamics products. So, you know, today, um, as I said, we're, we're migrating everything towards the Power Platform from the administrative standpoint. You know, basic admin changes are happening, you know, very quickly now. Um, over the past year, CRM has become modular in that um, most of the uh, modules in CRM, whether it was sales or customer service or marketing or field service, they're now becoming refer uh, they're now being referred to as apps by Microsoft. And so they're being considered apps and they now are uh, apps under the power platform. Uh, over the past year, we've transitioned to the new unified interface, or at least most of us have um, actually talked with the client today and realized that they have an, um, a potential new client. And uh, one of the first things I saw was they hadn't even done anything with the transition. And Microsoft is going to deprecate the front end in two weeks. So they've got a little scrambling. Um, the classic interface for the front end of CRM is going to be gone December 1st of 2020. Here at Logan, we've already transitioned to the unified interface and have been on the unified interface since we went to the cloud back in March. Um, <clears throat> the classic back end interface for admin and configuration still exists, which you'll see here in a few minutes, and we're going to walk through a couple examples on that. Um, but by this time this uh, next year, um, that will also be deprecated and gone. They will move beyond the classic interface uh, for most of the admin items and it will transition completely to the power platform. Um, what is the power platform? Well, it really consists of a couple of different things. Um, power admin, where we basically manage all the back end uh, environments and settings for the power apps. Um, and some of these items have been moved directly to the front end of CRM for easier access. Before they were always buried in the back end admin panel. And you're going to see that they've moved forward on some of these. Um, the power apps, and, and again, I know these terms may sound a little confusing, so just think of it this way. Power platform consists of a number of different items. Power admin, power apps, common data service, power automate and flow, and power apps designer. So there's there's a bunch of different things that are happening here. Um, you know, the power app CRM has simply become an app to configure and manage under the power platform. Uh, the common data service is what all of the apps now sit on top of. So there is a common data service that extends across the entire Azure backbone. And so CRM is kind of leading the way. They've talked about this for years, uh, but now over the last three to five months, uh, they've taken the first steps to allow integration across the platform. So for example, um, we can integrate with and connect with Business Central, um, Finance and Operations, Power BI, and Office 365 items like SharePoint and other items. Um, <clears throat> and then of course there's Power Automate, which is Flow. Think of Flow as a workflow on steroids. Um, 
It can connect across the entire platform of Microsoft Dynamics products, but it can also connect to Office products, and it has hundreds of application connectors now for other outside applications, whether it's Oracle, SAP, or one-off things like Trello and, and some of the other um, smaller application platforms out there. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about Power Admin. Um, Power Admin consolidates most of the basic admin features, and we're going to, I'll show you these in a minute, and, and to some of the, those of you who've seen CRM before, it'll become familiar. Um, basically, it has a separate login. It's admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com. You know, through here now, we can add users, set security roles, do backups of an environment instantly. Uh, we can copy environments. So we can copy production environments down to Sandbox or a dev environment or a training or UAT environments, and we can copy from Sandbox to Sandbox. One good thing about it, it, it never allows you to copy from a Sandbox up to production and wipe your production. Um, you can view and manage storage capacity through the Power Admin uh, platform and you can create and maintain portals through this platform also. So before I go on any further, any questions so far? I know we're kind of throwing a lot of these power terms around. So any questions by anybody? We're good? OK. Um, <clears throat> let me go into the Power Apps um, side of things. Oh, and, and one thing I just want to point out, this little box over here, this is a snippet from that we normally see when we log in under our CSP program, we start to log in with various clients. And so when we go back in to administer the, and, and log in and access CRM through there, uh, we come up to a little menu. And uh, the way I learned about Power Platform was last May when I logged in and I was looking for Dynamics 365 customer engagement, which is what they were calling CRM. And I couldn't find it here. And finally, I started clicking around and opened up Power Platform and bingo, that's where everything was at. So that transition just happened literally overnight back in May. Uh, and now they've continued to build it out uh, more and more. So, um, <clears throat> so let's talk about the Power Apps platform. Power Apps is being touted as the low code way to develop new apps and deploy them through a common platform. So that's what M Microsoft is advertising out there, and you're probably seeing it all over the place. Um, yeah, that's true. Um, but for the purposes of CRM, this is the place where we go in and start configuring Dynamics 365 apps. Again, we still have a classic interface, which we're going to go through here in a few minutes. But this is where everything's moving to. And uh, this Dynamic 365 apps are what they call model-driven apps. Um, <clears throat> the creation of new power apps, these little lo low-code apps that you might use to build out a time entry app that you can deploy to a mobile device or whatever. Those are what we call Canvas apps. Uh, I'm not going to talk about too much about these new power apps and the Canvas apps here at all tonight. That's a completely different subject. It's just that they're all accessed now under this Power Apps platform. Uh, another piece is the App Designer. So what the App Designer does is something that we've all been asking for for about 10 years from Microsoft. Um, we can literally go into the App Designer now and change the sitemap um, with a very friendly user interface. Um, we can move menus around. We can rename menus. Um, we can uh, disable uh, forms that are being used or enable special forms. We can enable or disable views, and we can enable and disable business process flows through there, which are a special type of workflow. Um, <clears throat> the other item that really is the main administrative point for Power Apps is, is Power Automate or the flows, and we're going to go through of that and show you, you know, kind of where they fall in here. 
and how they work. I'm actually going to show you an example of one that fires and actually uh, does some work. Um, and then also, this is where our solutions are at. Solutions are a combination of entities which contain all fields, views, things like that, forms for CRM that we would customize and build out. So particularly if we start working for a client and we're working on a project, we would create a solution for that project. And in that solution, we would do that in dev. We would make all the changes in there. And then once that is um, set, we would use that to move to UAT and then eventually to production. Any changes after the fact then are continually done in those solutions and they're moved up to production. The key issue is you need to keep all of your environments in sync and Microsoft gives you a pretty easy process by allowing you to copy the environments across uh, from production down to UAT or, or dev as required. Um, and just a couple of things that I want to touch play, uh, uh, touch on before we jump into actually walking through some of this is there's other functionality that CRM admins can enable things like SharePoint uh, teams integration with CRM. Um, we haven't actually done one of these yet. Um, there is some question as to really what's the value there of the of a teams integration. Um, the other thing is uh, LinkedIn integration, which we have turned on internally, and I've done this for several clients. And then the, the final item is portals. Now, portals has been around for a while, but it was kind of in the background. It was always kind of a uh, hard to do, kind of awkward uh, functionality in, from Microsoft. Uh, portals now is kind of in the forefront, and they've given you a number of uh, templates to actually spin these up actually pretty quickly now and develop them and design them and then link them into CRM with all the securities that are required inside of CRM. So portals has become a, a major piece of the Power Apps application. OK, uh, before I move on, any questions here? OK, so everybody still still with me? OK, so we're going to jump into the system here we're going to do a little bit of a walkthrough uh, we're going to look at the classic admin access a power admin platform access we're going to get into power apps platform so you can get a feel for it and, and look at it we're going to go through a couple of uh, power automate flow examples and we're going to look at a live sharepoint integration example on our demo system okay so with that, I'm going to close this up and, you know, so typically here's a sandbox environment. It's our demo environment. We have some uh, accounts set up in here. Uh, we use this for demoing with clients. There's a number of different things in here, um, but we'll use this for our um, training tonight. Um, so typically to get into the back end classic um, interface, we typically access it through this gear icon up in the right hand corner here. And so we, we need to go to advanced settings. Now, obviously anybody who's doing this and needs to do CRM admin has to have a CRM admin security role. And that's a role that has to be granted by another CRM admin. Um, typically we would click on this. This would bring up our back end. This back end has pretty much remained the same since CRM 2011, almost 10 years ago. So they have not made a whole heck of a lot of changes. So it's right for it. now a little bit of, you know, changes over the years, but basically this is pretty much the same the way it's looked for a number of years now. Um, so this is the typical back end access. So one of the most common things that a CRM admin would do is add security roles for users. So in order to enable a user to allow them to use CRM, you have to do two things. Number one, they have to be granted a license. Well, the license has to be granted through the Office 365 global admin. Uh, in our case, that's James. And that license would be added in through their Office 365 portal. Once that's added in, the CRM admin can go in here under security and we can look at users 
And so, Andy, I'm going to use you as my example here tonight. And again, we're on the demo system. So every environment, whether it's demo or dev or production, um, even though you might have security roles to log in, say, to production, they have to be granted under each environment. Okay. So normally, um, most people would not have them under this environment. So Andy, I'm just going to use yours for an example here. Um, and basically, we want to go to manage roles. Well, when we manage roles, we're not only adding security, but we're also now granting access to the specific app. So again, think about that. The apps in CRM are things like sales, which are accounts, contacts, opportunities, leads, things like that. And that's primarily what we use internally. And that's what probably the majority of our clients use when they're using CRM. But there are other apps. There's marketing apps, and then there's a customer service uh, app. So you have to add security roles for all of those. And security roles can become very granular and you have to really understand security and really dig into it so you understand what you need to grant. But in this case here, typically what we would grant is we have to grant access if they wanna connect with Outlook. Um, we have to give them access to the sales or enterprise app if we want them to get into those accounts, contacts, opportunities. And then we have to give them a general security role that allows them to maneuver around or navigate within the system. So those are typically three of the ones that we would give users. Uh, we can elevate those. So there's things like a system administrator. A system administrator security role overrides all other security in the system. So. Once a person is granted system administrator, it doesn't make any difference what else they have configured up here. They have access to everything in the system. By default, that makes them very dangerous. I'll so, take that example, please. <laughs> Andy, what'd you say? <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that um, roll. Okay. All right. I don't think so, Andy. <laughs> uh, it, and it makes you dangerous. it dangerous. It gives you access to everything and it's something that somebody needs. It's not something that you want to grant to most normal users in the system. You want to restrict it, maybe have one or two users that are actually admin users, maybe a main CRM admin and maybe a fallback person. Um, what is the reason why? Somebody could go in here and literally wipe out the system if they had admin system uh, privileges and did not know what was going on. They could literally delete every piece of data in the system. So that's um, just a little word about system admin access. Um, the other thing is, it's interesting is that uh, as Microsoft refines some of the roles and some of the new functionality, like um, we just went through our wave two upgrade updates um, just in the past two weeks, Microsoft publishes two major updates a year for the cloud products, once in the spring, once in the fall. We just went through the fall 2020 update. Every time I look at this after they do it, they start adding in new security roles. And a lot of times they put these security roles in that they don't have not even uh, announced um, products for yet. So they're adding these way ahead of time. And so you have to be very careful. Um, security roles can be edited um, by a CRM admin, and that's what we use to, as part of our configuration of a system where we grant or deny access to certain records or views of records or certain fields on records. So once we set OK on this, um, and I don't know if, yeah, Andy does have a license. If Andy went to this URL and logged in with his Office 365 um, login, he would actually be able to access the demo system. So again, two-step process, license first, then security roles inside. Um, so that's an example of a classic way of doing this. Um, and again, we got through just by going through this gear in the back end and brought us to this classic interface. You know, some of the other things that we can do here, um, we can set up document management, and this is where we set up our 
SharePoint OneNote uh, integrations, um, thing, things like that. Uh, we can also do a OneDrive integration here. Um, customizations today through the classic system, we typically customize the system. What do we mean by customize? This is where we can go into any entity, create new entities, so accounts, and you'll see there's literally hundreds of objects or what we call entities in the system. Um, some of them we use, some of them are background system ones. Um, you have to know what you're doing and what you're looking at here when you come in here. Um, you can also add and create new entities on the fly, and that's a, that's a very common function when we build out systems for clients. We will build custom entities that contain their own views, their own forms, their own fields for capturing data. Um, let me go back to solutions. Solutions is basically a customized version of those customizations. So, for example, a couple of weeks ago, we were doing a demo for Northern Illinois Food Bank. So I created a solution for Northern Illinois Food Bank and put all of my customizations in there. And so I brought across everything that I needed and all of these that have this little gear, generic little icon, those are all custom entities that I built out for the, um, the demo. And these all contain certain types of data and they're all utilized as part of the build out. And so this is a very common function that we use for clients. So for example, we just finished up a client uh, at BAI and we created solutions for the initial phase one, which was primarily sales. And then we did a customer service and within customer service, we built out three different solutions that we added additional functionality into and then transfer it up into production once it went through the pro proper CRP process. Um, included in these solutions, we can add workflows, uh, process flows, we can add uh, security roles, we can add um, web resources such as JavaScript, although we're getting away from that more and more with each update from Microsoft. They're building in more and more functionality. Five years ago, there was a ton of things that we always had to build out custom JavaScript for. Today, again, just going through a major project, we used it once. So a um, lot of the functionality is being built out inside of CRM as standard um, uh, components. So this is kind of our look at the classic side. So let's go to the power uh, platform side and let's go to the admin center. And so again, this is our admin center. Um, so let me just kind of give you, and we're gonna kind of walk through this pretty quick. Uh, we're not gonna spend a lot of time because you're gonna see that some of these pieces here. So if I highlight Logan demo here, we can go into settings and if I go into settings here, I can get at some of the same things that we went and just looked at in the classic interface. So, for example, um, I want to go to product here and I want to look at or let's go to users and permissions. I can go right from here and add users and set security roles and, and things like that. But you'll notice if I click on users here. I can see the same set of users. But if I click on Andy here again, what does it take me back to? It takes me back to the classic interface. So here's a piece that Microsoft hasn't updated yet. All they've done is just reconnect it. So again, like Mike, uh, as in CRM today, there's many ways to get to the same location from many different menu locations. Um, eventually, this will go by the wayside and they will probably update this and I'll show you in a few minutes what the new forms look like. They'll probably come under the uh, um, <clears throat> same look and feels that they're going to show on the power apps for customizations here in a minute. Um, so let's go back to our environment. A couple other things that are kind of a cool thing to do here. Um, <clears throat> we can look at uh, in a second here, we're going to look at a few other things, particularly like capacity. 
we can see how much storage we're using here. And we actually now have granular access to actually download a CSV of all the tables and all of the storage being used in the system, which was uh, available if you were on premise a couple of years ago, but uh, wasn't available in the cloud up until about three months ago. So uh, that is now available. But up here is where we can do backups or we can copy down. So when we're copying across um, uh, environments, we can do a copy from here and copy it over dev and overwrite everything in dev with a copy of production, for example. And it brings across, we can do just data or we can just do the schema. So it brings across a set of schema without any data. Um, we can do, yes, go ahead. Hey, Don, um, on, on storage, is storage a concern for CRM? And if, if it is, what tends to eat up storage capacity the most when you're implementing CRM? As far as, uh, what was that, Brent? As far as how much you use typically? Right, right, in terms of the size of the database. Uh, it really depends. Um, like, for example, one of our clients today, um, Allied, they've been on it for a year, they've been pretty active. Their actual database size, because they only use a couple entities, is pretty uh, small. It's only about five gigs, believe it or not. The data inside of it is pretty tight. Our database, for example, our main production is, is approaching 12 gigs. Um, the BAI database, production database, is approaching uh, 25 gigs. Um, the actual schema alone generally only handles maybe anywhere from two to three gigs only for the actual schema itself. Don, is there a cost associated with the size of your database as it grows? Yes. So when you get licensed, it's based on the number of users. So basically, um, for every, and I don't know where the actual break point is, I'd have to actually ask Jim about that. But um, it, say you spin up an environment, you have 10 users, uh, you typically get uh, 10 gigs of, of uh, storage included. And then the cost is $10 per gig per month. Now, with that said, Microsoft has made some changes and this was always a sore point with a lot of the users here in the last year um, or a couple of years. Um, they have now developed this, and we're gonna, we're gonna look at this here in a second, um, in the storage capacity. They have now broken out documents storage and reclassified it uh, out of the data storage realm. And documents can take up a lot of space, but they are no longer charging us for that. And that was a real sore point with a lot of cl clients. Microsoft has resolved that issue, I think. And they just did that literally in the last, I think they just announced this like less than a month ago. And it was kind of quietly announced. Um, there wasn't a lot of press on it. Um, but um, that was a real sore point because people were, we had, you know, we have a client that on premise and they have over uh, one terabyte of document storage. And we separated it out through a through an extractor, but um, if they had gone online, that would have cost them, you know, thousands of dollars a month just for storage. Um, so let me show you a backup. Backups are really simple here. Um, we can create a backup, real simple. Um, Bingo. This backup is a snapshot backup, but that got literally created about five gigs in this database. That literally got created in what, 10 seconds? We can go back to the backup and restore it right from here also. And if we go to manual, you can see this backup right here. We could choose this and restore directly from this. You'll notice that there's system backups. 
Microsoft now does continuous backups in the background roughly every 30 minutes, depending on the size of your database. They don't give us direct parameters, but typically you can go back in 30 uh, minute segments back three days to restore. But again, it's a full restore. You cannot selectively restore tables. So they have come a long way in terms of handling some of the background um, on this. All right, let's look at capacity here. I don't want everybody to jump. So we're actually over on our capacity here. And I'll show you here in a few minutes because I only see these three environments. But you'll see here in a minute, there must be other environments here because the total storage for these three does not add up to 25 gigs. So we can go in here and we can look and it's basically showing us. So you have a database, you have a log and a file. Um, we can go into storage capacity and break this out. So database usage, this is what we get charged on. This is what you get charged for. File usage. Um, typically file usage now is where they're splitting off things like document. Um, this is what your uh, schema is using. Uh, things like that. They do not charge for file usage or log usage. However, if you start to exceed those for some reason, your log file blowing up exponentially, and you do have the ability to turn on logging, um, they will notify you and tell you to resolve it. That means deleting log files, and you do have a way to do that. Um, you can go in here, and we can. Uh, look at this here so you know if we go in here it gives us kind of a view a granular view of total storage top database capacity and file capacities by tables and as it pops up here you can download all of these this only shows you like the top 10 um, you can go in here and actually download a CSV of every single table and its storage use in the system. So you do have access to everything. Uh, that's a nice feature, particularly if you're looking at ways to clean out data, which you can do through cleaning out old workflows and import runs and things like that. Um, some of these tape, it doesn't make any difference because some of these we can't access. So for example, this, it's just what it is. We cannot change it. We have no control over this. It's just database space that's being used by the system. OK, so that's the Power um, Apps um, platform. Uh, as you can see, there's a couple other things here. We can set up portals here. Um, let me just show you this. Here's basic portals here in terms of um, these are portal add-ons and each one of them you can set them up and they have about five different templates um, that you can use that helps you kind of set up your initial configuration then you can build them out from there uh, in its raw form the templates are not usable you have to do additional configuration so you have to have kind of a plan of what you want to do to build these out but these actually spin up a website that you can go out and hit at an https uh, url and uh, connect in and we can connect these directly into CRM and they're controlled by um, the same single sign-on uh, and security roles. Um, so let's go into, I think the next one here is the app designer because I want to show you this and then we'll jump into the power platform. So the app designer, and this again is available for every module for every environment. So this one here is brought up for the demo environment, and I'm in the sales hub module or the sales module, and this allows us to um, edit sitemap menus, dashboards, business processes, and then all of the entities we can edit forms, 
views, charts, and dashboards. So for example here, if I go here, these are all the menus we see, and it's pretty much drag and drop. I can take this and drag it and drop it over here. Um, and I can hit, keep hitting save up here, and it keeps saving it for me so I don't lose it. I could take uh, this and move it up here. Um, I can add new ones in. I could put, uh, let's say I want to add opportunities underneath here. I could put, or leads, uh, let's see here. I could put, uh, let's see. Here, I'll, I'll take a custom entity that we had built for a demo, and I can just drop it right in there. Now, watch what happens when I actually go into the app. I'm going to publish this. And I can go in here, refresh and see the results immediately. And we have to do a double refresh. And so now you saw the insurance carrier got added up here and some of these other items, like <clears throat> uh, some of the other items got moved down. So we can move things around pretty quickly and change items on here through that um, application designer. We can also change what views are available. Right now, I limited it to three views here. Well, I can I can make those adjustments through that app designer in the back. We still have to create the views inside the uh, um, application, but we can adjust the views and what is visible here through the sitemap editor. Um, so let's go into now, let's look at the Power Apps. Um, Let's go into home. You're going to see all of the ads here. So you're starting to see, OK, they're giving us connectors for all sorts of stuff. SharePoint, Excel, SQL. Yeah, there's a built in connector here for SQL now. Common data service. That's what underlies all of the Dynamics 365 products on the Azure backbone. So that's what allows us now to start doing integration through here. Well, how do we configure some of that? Remember in the classic interface, we had to go to customizations. Well, here we go to data. And I wanna make sure I'm in the right environment. So I'm in the Logan demo environment. And unfortunately, they don't use the same terminology here. It's a little different. And this is where some, it is a little confusing. Whereas in the CRM under the classic, we called it entities. Well, now we go to data and we can go to, I'm sorry. Clicked on that. Instead of referring to this as entities, these would all be called entities in CRM, or some people refer to them as objects. Microsoft called them entities. Now they call them tables. But that's a more generic term because that's more likely what you might use if you're building your own app. You're going to build it from a table or a mult or a selection of tables. So if we want to, these are all entities that are in this environment. So let's go to our account entity. And now we start to see some of the familiar items here that we can customize through our, um, that we would customize normally through the back end classic. And again, they don't, <clears throat> they, they don't refer to this as fields, they call them columns now. Um, those are the fields. Uh, we can set relationships. That means lookups to other entities. We can set business rules here. Um, business rules create actions on forms. So these are custom actions. Remember I talked earlier about we used to use JavaScript for a lot of items. We no longer have to do that because business rules replaces probably 80% of the JavaScript that, um, today. So we can create uh, business rules right within inside the application.
um, views. These are just the queries, you know, that's that's the views inside of here. So a view is, this is a view, active accounts. We have different views. These are my active accounts. So I'm logged in as CRM admin. These are the three accounts assigned to me, okay? So right here, um, we can look at those views and create views. And these are all views that are available in the system. And as you saw, I only had three of them enabled because I use that app designer to disable or hide the rest of these. Okay. Let's go back to um, um, forms. These are the basic forms and you can create forms on the fly all the time or take an existing form and modify it. But remember I showed you before we would go in there and create items here. This is the new look for a form. A little bit different. Kind of gives us a basic layout of what the field, what the form would look like. It's a little bit more realistic and it's just drag and drop of these fields onto the form. We can update the name of the form. Um, we can give it descriptions. We can change some width on the forms, things like that. There's a few other things that we can do. Um, a cool thing about the back end now, they've given us some other functionality like auto number on fields. Now that may sound really simple and easy, but up until six months ago, we never had that. We had to build that out through a customization or using JavaScript or something like that. Uh, Microsoft provided it for a core of about eight items, eight entities. Now we can build this out and thank God it was in the nick of time because for our BAI, uh, project. We use this extensively on a lot of their forms. They required a uh, an account ID or a uh, an ID for that form. Um, you can, you know, it gives you flexibility. You can add um, formatting to it, number of decimals. You can set a starting number, things like that. So it's pretty flexible. Um, let's go back to um, our account form here and let's go back to our power app here We're coming up on 545 so there's a couple other items that i just want to be able to show you here real quick and then go in and do a couple quick demos of some actions here um, the next item is flows now these are the power automates remember what i said about power automate it's like a workflow on steroids it can reach across not only the entire Dynamics platform, the entire Microsoft Office stack, but it can reach out through connectors. You can connect into a multitude of other um, applications now and pull in data. So these are some flows that I've created. Um, these are my flows, meaning I created them under this admin login. I have team flows. That means I shared them with a different login. And one of those that I'm going to show you, because I'm actually going to show it to you here in a minute, is creating an account um, SharePoint subfolder. Um, when a new uh, SharePoint folder is created inside a CRM. So let me set the scenario for you. Um, under the account, um, we have an integration that fires and um, we set up a specific library for this in SharePoint. And every time it fires and if a folder structure has not been set for that account, it creates a new one in SharePoint. And it allows you then to upload documents through your CRM account so that you already so you always know where those documents um, are accessed. So you can keep your uh, documents organized within your CRM system. Um, and what this does is it creates a set of subfolders when that uh, folder, when that integration first fires. Um, so it's really, this one here is pretty simple. It's basically just a number of connectors pulled in and some functionality. So we have a connector for the basic common data service. So when a new SharePoint document location is created in CRM, it adds these subfolders. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it gives you some functionality, but it's, it's really pretty straightforward. We're firing on the entity name called document locations. 
and the trigger is when it when a new one is created. When that happens, we go to this demo SharePoint site. We look for the library that says account and the relative URL that we pull from up here. And we just create a folder called memberships and liability documents. So this one has two subfolders it's going to create. This one's going to be tax status documents. So let me show you how that works. So this is live. So I'm going to go into, I think these all have them, active accounts. And let's go to Apple. So we have a, a tab here called files. We click on that. So what happened here is it created this uh, grid here. When this populated, the integration had fired and it created a document site in SharePoint for this, and it's linked directly inside of here. So literally we could go and start uploading documents here, but that flow fired in the background and it's going to add a couple sub folders here. And if I refresh, you'll see we have two subfolders here. It's just automation that runs in the background. And we can name those. I have one client, we put 10 subfolders. They have a standard set of subfolders that fires every time. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple um, example of a power automate operation. Yes. Pretty much saying that like an integrated workflow like this, we could get, if we did our support desk this way, we could get an inbound support email or request that through CRM, that would connect to our Outlook, right? Which then could also connect to our SharePoint issue action items and potentially also connect to our notes in OneNote. Uh, yeah, potentially. Um, Is that, I mean, that's pretty, that's the whole point of it, right? Yeah, I mean, um, we can actually go in here and I could upload a document right here. Choose a file here. Uh, let me see if I can, I'll pull this. And boom, we just uploaded this spreadsheet. And I can, nav I can navigate back to the top level here. So again, we have these two, I click on here and there it is right there. Great way to keep yourself organized. So if you're, you know, if we have opportunities or projects or something like that, you can associate all the documents and find them right here instead of searching all over the place for them. Yeah. You notice also up here, this is kind of a cool little function. This just came on live a couple, about two months ago. Um, I just put this in. I did not put this logo in. It has some background intelligence now. They're using some uh, background AI. It actually goes out, searches the web, and pulls in the logo for this. Pretty cool. Um, let me show you another item here. Um, and I don't have this live, but LinkedIn can be enabled by a CRM user. We do have this live on our production side, and so the sales um, partners all have access to this. If they have a navigator um, subscription, so it's saying right here, you have to have a, a LinkedIn sales navigator subscription. I do not have one logged in as this. Um, but what's cool about this, if we go to contacts, let's say I just pull up Bob West here. It will go out there and look at his contact and search and pull in everything. So he would pull in his member profile from LinkedIn, the account that he's associated with. Um, you could even send LinkedIn in mail right directly from here. Again, we don't have that. I don't have a license for this, so you can't see the full functionality, but it gives you an overview of what this is. The other thing that's really cool about this. Um, you can enable a workflow now that updates this automatically. So if good old Bob here leaves, you know, his parent company, 
Faith Church of Beecher and heads someplace else. Once a day, LinkedIn will run process in the background and update this and update it to his new location if you decide to enable that. Pretty slick. That's a feature that a lot of people have asked about. How do we keep track of contacts that move between accounts? Uh, I know in the automobile business, that's big. Um, a lot of other financial services like banks, guys are constantly jumping around. Um, so that's that's huge. And when somebody has 100,000 100, contacts in a system, that becomes pretty difficult to track. Go so ahead. That's Some a great feature. Thank you for uh, sharing that with us. I have a sales calculator account. I'll be flipping. Yeah. So, um, Craig, if you, if you have a if you have a navigator account, uh, and that is a separate you know license and everything that you guys have to log in and uh, create uh, and pay for, um, that should be up and working for you on the great. production side. Okay, um, so that pretty much, um, I think that pretty much covers, uh, you know, kind of the the basics of what CRM is starting to transition to. Um, you know, there's a lot of changes happening very quickly right now. Um, the uh, SharePoint integration is a common function that we do quite often for clients now. Um, probably 60% of all the projects we've done in the last two years, we've set that integration for them and they've been using that. Um, that's a pretty popular one. Um, the flows are making things a lot easier. You can start grabbing data or pulling in data from outside sources relatively quickly. Uh, flows gave us a few things that we couldn't do before and again kind of saved us, saved my butt on a project again when we, we had some things that we had to update at the account level from three or four levels deep, I was able to configure a flow to run in the background to handle that for me. Otherwise, I would have had to pull in a developer and a developer would have had to put together a plugin to do that. So it's making us more efficient, a little bit quicker, a little bit more agile in terms of development time. Um, the whole platform obviously is moving towards a development platform, and I think that's the key thing, the, the other key takeaway for tonight. Um, CRM's leading the charge, but Microsoft, I think, will start bringing in, um, and I haven't seen anything specific, I don't know, but I suspect that, you know, Business Central and f &O will eventually become, quote, apps on top of the common data service. So that pretty much ends mine. I mean, the the, the um, um, I guess my final comment, um, you know, Power Platform now is really the new standard for uh, customer engagement and administration CRM, and uh, and it's an it's really a new direction for Microsoft, and that's they're they're pushing that direction very hard and very quick right now, and so there's a lot of changes happening. So. That's the end of my presentation. I just want to open it up and throw it open to questions. Anyone? Don, this is James. Next I'll, I'll throw out one, one item is your the flows. Actually, that same concept works quite well in SharePoint as well. Right. Right. You you can run flows in SharePoint. You can run them across. You, you can do it on a. Um, um, you can run it in Outlook. You can run it on uh, um, your email client. Pull stuff, grab, grab email information and pull it for a specific application. Um, so it's, it's very functional. It's not just a CRM thing. Um, any other comments, thoughts? Okay. Um, that's all I have for tonight. Um, thanks everyone for attending. I appreciate it and have a great evening and we'll talk soon. Good thanks, job. Jeff. Great job. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Great job. Thanks, Don. Thanks.